So as those of you know who have been watching this channel for a while, I have a whole home solar system with battery storage, so I don't have to rely on the utility company at all really for my power. Now the reason I did that was because a few years ago, back during the snowpocalypse here that we had in Texas, where our grid almost went down like for a couple months, I think they said we were like 15 minutes away from it dropping for a couple months, um, that woke me up to the fact that I need to take uh, my power into my own hands and not rely on them for such a critical need for my family. And it's funny because years ago, our electric rates were only 10 cents a kilowatt hour. And now in the last but four years, they've gone up to about 15 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's like a 50% increase in the last four years. And with all the AI data centers going in, with everything being electrified, houses, electric vehicles, um, electric rates are still going up and way faster than the rate of inflation. So while it wasn't on my mind to be in the beginning when I actually put in my system, uh, I'm thankful I did now with the way electricity rates are going. So the main purpose of this video was I just wanted to go over like how has my life changed being on solar and battery storage? Like, is it worse? Is it better? Um, and I'm just going to be plain honest. It's really much better and it's maybe a little worse in some ways as well. So why is it much better? Well, when the sun's out like a day like today, I can run my whole house and I can run my air conditioning down to 68 degrees. I mean, I have so much power, I don't know what to do with it during the day. Now I do have 19 kilowatts of solar panels, so that'll give you an idea how much power I can produce throughout the day. But when the sun is out, I mean, I live like a king. And when the sun is not out, I just have to do a little bit better power management, I like to say. I'm more of a, uh, a conscious user of my electricity. I use the resources when I have it, and when I don't have it, which is the sun, I back off on my power usage. And I don't have to back up or back off that far because I do have 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So what does my typical day look like? Well, just like you, I wake up, we make breakfast, we turn on the TV, make coffee, things like that. We've got plenty of power to do all of that. I run seven refrigerators here at my house because I have meat storage. We have a milk cow, so we store a lot of milk. I have a deep water well pump. So, But what we do is we just manage our power better. So we use the power when we have it, and when we don't have it, we just back off a little bit. So the real difference isn't really what we do, but it's how we think about doing it. So I've developed what I call energy awareness. I don't obsess about my electricity usage, which I do, I am mindful about, and I watch it daily, but I do know that on a bright sunny day, man, I'm gonna do as much laundry as I can. I'm gonna heat my water heater all the way up to 140 to be able to store some of that energy in just hot water. I can run my well pump a little bit more to store more water in my tanks. And really I have most of this automated now where it automatically happens and I could just change the schedule of things if it's a real cloudy day. So like I said, on a sunny day, I'm gonna run my air conditioning or heater to make the house a little bit more comfortable than I normally would because I know I've got the power to do it. And on days when it's cloudy, I'm going to back off, maybe have the, the house a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler, depending on what season it is, obviously, to use less energy. I might not do laundry during the day if it's a real cloudy day. And actually what I do is really look at my weather app and see, is it gonna be back to back cloudy days? Because if it's just one cloudy day, I can pretty much keep my lifestyle the same but if it's gonna be back-to-back -back cloudy days or a storm where it's gonna be really thick clouds, then I will back off and not do laundry, keep my house warmer. So I think what I'll do is uh, soon I'll make a video about kind of just what does my typical day look like when it's a sunny day? And then what does my typical day look like when it's a cloudy day? How do I use power in each of those days? And I think that'll give you a really good idea. So another question I get is, well, do you regret putting it in? And my answer to that is absolutely no regrets at all. I love the system that I have. Managing my power isn't really about feeling restricted. It's more about just being in sync with the resources that you have and using those resources when they're available rather than just being like a passive consumer of electricity and not even thinking about it. But probably the most incredible benefit of having this system is just the self-reliance you get. A couple weeks ago, the power went out in my area. Nothing changed with my family. Lights stayed on, fridges, I have seven of them, all kept running. I had my air conditioning blasting, watching TV, movies, nothing changed. We didn't have to go fumbling around to find flashlights and all huddle together at night around the dining room table under a lantern. So um, just that resiliency is, it's hard to put a price on. So a lot of you are probably thinking, okay, well, how much did this system cost me? Well, I got this system about four years ago and it cost me right around $40,000. And that's 19 kilowatts of solar panels, which is a lot. 
Uh, that's a lot of power. Uh, 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage and the all-in-one solar inverter, which basically takes that DC energy from the solar panels and batteries and converts that to AC energy or inverts that to AC energy. That costs right around, I believe it's about $7,000. Um, and I did all of the labor on this system too. So I installed it myself. I do have uh, some electrical background working for my father-in-law when I was in college. He was uh, a commercial electrician for over 30 years. So I got a good amount of background knowledge there. So I was able to do this whole system myself. Now I know what you're probably thinking is you can never do that. You don't understand electricity. And what I would say is you can do most of this labor yourself, like installing the solar panels on racking, um, laying the wire, digging the trenches for the conduit from the solar panels back to your inverter, things like that. But leave the final connections to a professional, to a licensed solar installer or a licensed electrician. That is the dangerous part. Um, and this is dangerous. There is, it's high voltage. I mean, the voltage coming from my solar panels over to my inverter is right around 400 volts, a little over 400 volts. So that can kill you. So if you don't know what you're doing, obviously hire a licensed person to handle that part of it for you. But a lot of this, you can do yourself, really. Um, because if you had to pay for the labor to install this system, I can tell you right now, the cost would go from about $25,000, which is what you could pay. So my system was $40,000. That same system now is about $25,000. That's how much prices have came down over the last four years, roughly. But if you don't do the labor, if you have someone else do all the labor, you're gonna look at about double the price just for the labor. So I would do as much of this as possible because $25,000 is to me a no brainer with where we're going with electricity prices, um, with all these AI data centers going in, taking up tremendous amounts of power and all of that additional infrastructure costs being passed on to us. Systems like these are a no brainer. I do have a download, a free PDF download that has all of the equipment I recommend to run a whole house system wiring diagram, links to where I got everything on how to install it, like links to the parts I use for the install. And that's free. You can download that by going to flexboss21.com. And once you do that, you'll be on my email list, which I send emails periodically, just kind of with tips and tricks that I have found that I've been doing this for years that I pass along to you. And you can reply to those emails if you have questions. And I try to respond to everybody. Now, sometimes I get a huge volume of them, especially now. I've got, gosh, I think five, 6,000 people on my list. So I can't guarantee to get back to you, but I will definitely do my best. So make sure you download that at flexboss21.com. So the equipment I use running my whole system is the Solark 15K all-in-one solar inverter. I've had that for now about almost three or four years. Uh, I use the EG4, the 48 volt server rack batteries. And as I said, I have 19 kilowatts of solar panels. I do also have in my outbuilding the Flexboss 21 inverter from EG4, which is a little bigger than the Solark 15K and less pricey. So that is the one that I recommend going with right now. Now, Solark did just release their 18K inverter. I have not got my hands on it yet, but maybe I will here soon. Um, and I'll check that out and report back to you all when I find out about that. And that equipment, both EG4 and Solark has worked flawlessly for me. I highly recommend those for whole home systems for DIYers. If that's what you're trying to do, that equipment is excellent. So that's really all I had for you for now. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer as many of those as I can. So make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're interested in seeing more content just like this. Thanks everyone. See you in the next video.